This is a listen and read story. You can read the story and you can listen to the story being told. This is the first of three stories about Patch. Patch lives in a small town in Canada called Yellowknife. In this first story, Patch is lost in the wilderness. Where am I? What happened? Patch looked around, trying to find something familiar. But everything seemed strange to him. He closed his eyes and desperately tried to remember what had happened. Slowly he began to remember. He remembered his owners, Jim and Susan, putting boxes into the van. Jim had said, that's all done now, Susan, we can set off. It's a long journey to Wood Buffalo. Hop in, Patch. Patch had heard them talking about the journey the night before. Jim had said it was 400 miles and would take over 11 hours to get there from where they lived in Yellowknife. Patch's memory was returning now. He remembered the journey. It had been uneventful, but the scenery was beautiful with lakes and trees and mountains. Then suddenly, at the bend on the road, the car had gone out of control. It had toppled over and he had been thrown out of the window into a ditch at the side. He was knocked out and when he came to, both Jim and Susan had been taken to hospital. The rescuers didn't know about Pat, so he was left there in the ditch. Worse still, he had lost his memory and wandered away into the forest and mountains. Pat didn't know how many days or weeks had been without his memory. He only knew that now he had to try to get home to Yellowknife. But which way was home? Patch looked left and then right, wondering which way to go. After a minute or so, some sense told him to go left and he set off on his adventures. He was tired and hungry. There's plenty of water the only food he could find was berries. He thought about the wonderful food Jim gave him and he became determined to get home. As he turned a bend, he saw a beaver busily gnawing through a tree trunk. Hello, I'm Patch. Can you tell me how to get to your and I? I'm lost and I want to go home. The beaver stopped for a moment and replied, My name is Bob. I'm very busy and can't stop my work for long. I'm building a dam across the stream and I want to finish it. I've never heard of Yellowknife, so I can't really help you. But if you find the wise owl, I'm sure he will know. Where can I find him? asked Patch. You'll have to cross the river and go over the mountains. Someone will know where he is. Thanks, I will try that. Bye, said Patch, and he set off to cross the river. When he reached it, he saw that it was quite wide and wondered how he could get across to the other side. At that moment, Bob appeared by his side. I'm sorry I was a bit rude when I spoke to you. I will help you cross the river. Just hang on to me and I will swim across. Bob was a very strong swimmer and they soon crossed the river. Thank you for your help, said Bash. It was really kind of you to stop your work to help me. I hope you soon finish your dam. He set off again to find the wise owl. Patch went through a forest and towards the mountains looking for the wise owl. He met a moose who was running happily in the grass. Excuse me, said Patch. I'm trying to find the wise owl. Do you know where he is? The moose replied. The last time I saw him, he was heading towards the big lake. If you go that way, you will soon find him. It's early now, so just keep the sun on your right hand side and that's the way to go. Good luck. Patch thanked the moose and set off again. He seemed to have travelled for miles trying to keep the sun on his right, but he knew that soon the sun would be above him and wasn't sure what to do then. Patch lay down beside an old tree trunk to have a rest when he heard a noise. He looked up 
and saw a brown bear coming towards him. Patch was worried at first, but soon realised that the bear was friendly. Hello, said the bear. You look very tired and hungry. Can I help at all? Patch replied, I'm trying to find the wise owl. I've been trapping for ages and I'm tired and really hungry. All I've eaten is berries and leaves. The bear said, I can't help you with the wise owl, but I can get you some food. Follow me. They set off and Patch followed him to a big tree, which had a large hole in the side. Stand back, said the bear, as he put his huge paw into the hole. When he pulled it out, it was covered in sweet-smelling honey. Let's go before the bees get angry, he said, and they quickly went back to the tree trunk. The bear gave Patch some honey to eat. It was delicious, and soon he was feeling full and contented. That was fantastic, said Patch. Thanks a lot, but I must keep on looking for the wise owl. Patch said goodbye to the brown bear and once again set off. Now the sun was on his left and was going down. Soon it would be dark again and he would need to find a safe place to sleep. He saw a rabbit hop along in front of him. Hi, said the rabbit. What are you doing here? Patch explained that he was trying to get home, and that he needed to find the wise owl to help him. The rabbit told him that he had seen the wise owl that very day in a wood, a few miles away. It's too late to go tonight, he said. You better rest over here until the morning. Patch agreed and lay down in the grass. He was very tired and soon fell asleep. He was dreaming about home. Jim was in the garden and they were playing ball together, as it always did. It was a lovely dream, but he was awakened by the rabbit saying, Wake up! If you go now, you will be able to catch up with the wise owl. Pat set off again, and soon he could see the lake. He kept going, and suddenly he heard the hoot of an owl. He ran quickly towards the sound, and there, on the branch of a tree, he saw a very large owl. Are you the wise owl? he asked. Can you help me? I want to go home to Yellowknife. The owl replied, Yes, I am the wise owl, and I will help you. Yellowknife is across the other side of this lake. You'll have to go round it, and then keep going. But take care, there's a very nasty wolf around, and he will kill you if he finds you. Patch didn't care about the wolf. He was nearly home, and nothing would stop him now. He thanked the wise owl. I will be careful and thank you very much, he said. He was feeling much better now that he knew he was going in the right direction to find his home. Patch circled round the lake and kept going. Suddenly he heard a large growl, and a ferocious wolf jumped out in front of him. It was a very scary sight, with sharp teeth, and he snarled menacingly at Patch. I don't like strangers round here. I eat them. The wolf leapt towards him and sank his teeth into Patch's leg. Patch cried in pain, but fought back with all his might. The wolf was so surprised at the ferocity of Patch that he let go. He was about to pounce again when there was a loud bang and he dropped to the floor, dead. Patch looked around and saw a man with a gun coming towards him. The man had shot the wolf. Patch was bleeding heavily from his wound, and the man picked him up gently and said, You are safe now. Don't worry, I will take care of you. He took Patch back to his cabin and cleaned and bandaged his wound. He gave him some wonderfully tasty food, the best food he had tasted in months. Patch gradually began to recover. The man washed him and cleaned his fur and soon he was more like his old self. He was very happy but still yearned for his own home. It's been a long time, he thought. Maybe they've forgotten all about me. 
Then one day the man came home and said to Patch, Well, old fella, I've found out who you belong to. There are posters all over with your photos on them. Your owners have been searching for you for months and had all but given up. They'll be coming to pick you up tomorrow. Patch was very excited by this news. They had not forgotten him. He found it hard to sleep that night and next morning eagerly awaited the arrival of Jim and Susan. Patch heard the noise of a car stopping outside the cabin. He ran to the window and looked out. There they were. Jim and Susan came into the room and Susan ran towards him and cradled him in her arms. Oh, Patch, she cried, I'm so glad we found you. We searched everywhere after the accident but couldn't find you. We thought you were dead, but now we can all go home together. Soon they were back in Yellowknife. Patch had been on a great adventure, but they realised there was no place like home. That was Patch's first adventure. In his next adventure, Patch is a hero.